I went from having 100 followers to 10k in just 22 days. Then I went from having 10k to 60k in just 12 days. What? This is literally crazy. In total, it took me just around a month to get from 100 followers to 60k and I'm going to show you how you guys can too. Never in a million years would I ever have thought that I would have reached 50k on Instagram. What? This is crazy to me. Today, I'm here to show you guys how I grew on Instagram and how you guys can too. If you guys are new to my channel or if you guys are new to my journey, my name is Paulina and I'm new to calisthenics and I've been documenting my calisthenics journey for about two months now. And in the course of two months, I have grown to 50K on Instagram, which is absolutely crazy to me. So now that I've grown this community, I feel like I have a pretty good insight on how to grow an Instagram account. So I'm gonna show you guys how you guys can grow your Instagram account organically and grow this community of people who are engaging and supportive in your content as well. So let's get straight into it. If you want to grow your Instagram account, I recommend that whatever niche you have, whatever you post, keep track of your progress. So for example, when you reach your first milestone, screenshot it and share it on your story and then eventually create a highlight so you can look back and track your progress on how quickly you've grown. For me, I started doing this, but not because I had a mindset of, oh, I need to track my progress. I literally started because I was like, wow, I reached 100 followers, this is crazy. I was never expected to reach 100 followers on my account and I just thought that was like an amazing milestone. So I decided to share it on my story and then eventually I kept doing that because I was so shocked with how quickly I was growing. And now when I look back, I'm just so grateful that I've done that because I can look back now and see how much I've actually grown and how quickly I did. So yeah. Keep track of your milestones. But let's have a look through my Instagram growth highlight and my milestones and how quickly I hit them. I started my Instagram account on the 22nd of December 2023 and in just under one month on the 22nd of January 2024, I gained my first 100 followers. It took me a whole month to gain that first 100. Then on the 4th of February, I grew 300. One day later and I grew to 400 followers. On the same day that I grew to 400 followers, I grew to 600 followers. This growth to me already was super crazy. It was like, 100 followers a day at this rate. And then on the 6th of February, literally two days later, I grew my first 1,000 followers. I'm gonna split this video up into a few different sections. So I'll leave timestamps in the description down below. So I've made some notes on my notes app about everything I've done to grow and what I think would help others grow. So I'm just gonna go down the list so I don't miss anything out and yeah. Also, this is just what's worked for me. And just because this has worked for me doesn't mean it's gonna work for you, but I'm hoping that these tips will help you out a little bit. And also I'm just talking about my own experience in growing my calisthenics Instagram account. But obviously you can change these tips up to match with your own niches. Um, so it doesn't have to be calisthenics related, but I'm purely gonna be talking about my calisthenics related Instagram growth. <laughs> okay, so first of all, pick a niche. I would recommend you stick to a specific niche. And when I was first starting out um, with content creation, I didn't know what my niche was. I wanted to do lifestyle, uni blogs, fitness, so many things, travel related videos. I had no clue what my niche was. So before you even consider growing an Instagram account, try and think about what you want to do. And it's okay if you want to have a lifestyle account and a lifestyle niche, loads of people have that as well. Um, but I would say that the more you post, the more you find out what works with you, what works with your audience and what your niche is basically. So yeah, try and find a niche. Once you found your niche, I recommend that you keep it separate to your other accounts. For example, you might have a personal Instagram account. If you want to start a fashion account, I would recommend you keep your fashion related content in a separate account to your normal Instagram account just because you want fashion related people that are also interested in fashion to come and find you or people that are interested in calisthenics to find you and they may not be interested in your personal life. So keep your account separate. Once you've picked your niche and you're certain that this is what you want to do, um, the main thing is it has to be something you enjoy because if you enjoy it, then you're gonna be motivated to stay consistent with it. Second of all, you've probably heard so many people say this, but I'm gonna go into a bit more detail about it because it's so true. This is like the one thing or the main thing that I've seen that's helped me grow my Instagram and that is to stay consistent. And when I say staying consistent, it can mean so many different things for everyone. For some people, they might think consistency means posting once a week for them. For me, consistency meant posting every single day and that's what I've been doing. I've been posting every single day for the past two months on my Instagram and that's just me tracking my calisthenics progress. And I guess the more videos you put out there, whenever someone new comes to your page, they have more videos to scroll through and see, oh, this is the kind of content that they post. So you kind of want to just be putting your content out there, but also making sure that you're posting good quality content. Also, this is another tip. When I say good quality content, I don't just mean like, oh, you need to have a fancy camera to film a good equipment, a good setup. No, you don't need any of that. When I say good content, it needs to be valuable for your audience. For example, me, I post my progress and this is valuable 
suitable for new calisthenics newbies that want to start calisthenics and they want to see someone who's progressing from the beginning so yeah I post my progress and that is valuable to newbies so you need to figure out what is your content giving is it entertaining is it valuable for your audience or is it relatable you need to make sure your posts are having one of those three things so yeah back to what i was saying make sure you're posting consistently that can mean once a week for some people that can mean once a day for someone else it just depends on how fast you want to grow but also make sure that you're not sacrificing the quality of your videos just so you can post a video out there. Don't just post a video for the sake of posting it, make sure it is actually valuable. But yeah, stay consistent even when you don't see results, even when you don't see people commenting on your stuff, liking your stuff, sharing your post, stay consistent. Once one video blew up, then it made people come to my page and then see my progress from the very beginning. So yeah, my next tip, this is applicable to the calisthenics niche. I think you can try and change this up a bit to match your niche but for me I did challenges for myself. I set myself 30 day handstand challenges, 30 day L sit challenges, 100 day chin up challenge which I'm currently still doing and I feel like if you're trying to grow a fitness account this is something that really really helped me um, because when you set yourself timed challenges not just day one of learning a handstand it has to be day one out of 30, day one out of 100, day one out of something, because that keeps your audience engaged. It makes them want to figure out, oh, what are they going to look like on day 30? If this is their day one, what is day 30 going to look like? You know? Um, so having a timed challenge, that really helps. Also, from experience, I figured that having 30 day challenges is probably better than a 100 day challenge. I started doing my 100 day chin up challenge and it was doing so well at the beginning. It still is doing pretty well. Like, I'm still crazy shocked about all the support I've received on the chin up challenges. But after a while, because 100 days is a long time, after a while, I'm currently on day 60, then it kind of becomes hard to like get new content out because it feels like all the chin-up videos are the same because now that I've learned how to do a chin-up the content becomes a bit repetitive so another thing I would say is to try and switch your content up a bit for example if you scroll down to my Instagram you can see down at the bottom you can see the progress I was making like here I was using a stool then sometimes I'm doing chin-up negatives like this and then sometimes I was using bands so there's kind of a variation I'm doing, I'm not just keeping it all the same. But now that I've kind of learned to do chin-ups, I feel like most of the content is starting to become the same. And that's only because 100 days is a long time for a chin-up challenge. So if you guys want to do these kinds of challenges, I would recommend you stick to 30-day challenges. But yeah, I'm going to continue my 100-day challenge just to see how many chin-ups I can do by day 100. And also, if I start something, I like to finish it. I don't just like to leave it midway. But for the future, I've learned that I'm only going to be doing 30-day challenges or 45-day challenges, not 100-day challenges. Although you may be doing these challenges, try and do something a little bit different. For example, once you've learned a skill, try and give some tips. Um, like I said, you want your content to either be relatable, informational, or entertaining. So, yeah. Okay, what else helped me grow? So at the beginning, when I first started posting, I tried to follow accounts that were in my niche. Not too many, like I didn't just go clicking random accounts that were also doing calisthenics. I actually looked at the profile and was like, oh, this looks like someone that's gonna motivate me. Um, this looks like someone that's on the same journey as me. Let's, let's follow them. Um, and I didn't actually follow that many. I only followed like 45 accounts, but within those 45 accounts, I actually made the effort to reach out to them or comment on their stuff or, engage with their content and they also did the same to me so um i've even now that i've gained like 50k there's still like that small group of people that were there since the beginning that i've kind of interacted with and they continue to interact with me so it's really nice um yeah don't just follow random accounts for the sake of it actually make the effort to see what they're posting and their, track their progress as well you know I feel like people blow up when they least expect it to. Um, if you're posting just because you want to blow up or you're posting just for the sake of wanting to gain followers, your audience can kind of sense that and they can kind of see, oh, this is just content that they're trying to post because they want to blow up. And it doesn't make people want to follow you. Um, I've noticed that if you just focus on the content you're trying to put out there, imagine you go to someone's page and they have your content. Would you be someone that would follow that person? Or would you be like, oh, they're just posting that because they want to gain followers. So think about it yourself. Is this something that you would follow if someone else was posting it? You never really know when you're going to blow up. But now that I've kind of gained that experience of blowing up and I've grown my audience I kind of know what they like and what they don't like so now when I post a reel I can kind of predict if that reel is going to do well and if it's not 
Okay, next you want to engage your audience. Don't just post things, engage with them. So by this, I mean commenting on other people's stuff, like I said, but also putting out stories where people can engage with you. Ask people how their day's been. Ask them what their skill that they want to learn is. Um, put polls in your stories. Put question box in your stories. And basically, you got to fake it till you make it. I would say. <laughs> Even when I had 900 followers, I was still posting stories with question boxes, I was still posting stories with polls and asking people what they wanted to see and stuff, what my next challenge should be after I finished my 30 day Elsa challenge. Um, so yeah, kind of fake it to make it. Act like you're an influencer and then people will start to believe you're an influencer and then you will become an influencer. <laughs> okay, let's go back a bit. How did I actually blow up? Was it just one video that blew up? Was it various videos? How did it actually happen? Okay, so for me, I started off my account doing a 30-day L-sit challenge where I posted a real daily of me trying to learn how to do an L-sit almost every single day for 30 days straight. But the video that actually blew up for me was my day 30 out of 30 learning how to hold an L-sit challenge. And I feel like that's because it was the last day of that challenge and people were like, wow, she actually knows how to do it. So then it made them want to come back to my page and see what was my progress like on day one. And in the video itself, I would put writing. I feel like putting writing in your videos really helps you because it's something for your audience to comment on. For example, for me, on my reels, it would always say day X out of 30 of learning how to do an LSIT. Okay, in regards to tags, I only ever used two tags and that was calisthenics and handstand or chin up or whatever the school I was doing in that reel was. And I feel like hashtags used to be a big thing in the past, but now, 2024, hashtags are not really that big. I feel like you can put so many hashtags down and it still wouldn't do much. Um, that's just in my own opinion. So yeah, I've always just kept it to two hashtags, small and compact, but I don't really know if the hashtags actually do anything. Okay, in terms of audio, I feel like some people are really good at this naturally, especially if you have TikTok or if you scroll a lot on Instagram, which I've done. Like, I feel like the way to learn is by seeing other people and what they post and what does well for them. Um, and it's not exactly copying, it's just learning from others that have done well. Um, like you guys are watching my video and I've done well, so you guys are learning from me. I feel like that's what I did on Instagram when I was scrolling and I would see reels that I've done really well and I'm like, what have they done that I can do to mine? And something I've learned is to use trendy audios or like audios that are well known. There might be a song that you really, really like, but it's not popular and that's okay. You can still use it. Obviously, it's your own content and you put what you like. But if you do want to grow on Instagram using trendy audios or just audios that match your videos in a trendy way, that's gonna really help a lot, um, especially if it's something, a trend that's going on on Instagram. For example, there's a new trend just now, and it's like um, a guy's voice, and it's like, how many chin-ups can a girl do statistically? Um, and then they go zero. And that's becoming a trend now because all the girls on Instagram that are into fitness accounts, they're all posting their chin-ups and pull-ups using this audio. And these are videos that are really doing well. Do you know how many pull-ups statistically um, a woman, do. yeah. On unassisted? Average. Unassisted pull-ups, how many do you think they can do? On average, probably 1.5. So yeah, using trendy audios really helps. Also, I forgot to mention the main type of content that does well, that I've noticed that does well, is Reels. Reels was introduced not that long ago, but it's a new feature, new-ish feature on Instagram. And if you want to grow, post your Reels. There is literally a Reel scroll page. These are random accounts that you don't follow, like a For You page basically for TikTok. I literally only post Reels. I've been posting Reels every single day for two months straight and this is how I've grown to 50k so definitely works definitely start posting your reels so yeah as I was saying when you scroll on Instagram reels you'll see trends that are trending and one of the trends that was trending was something like no one cares about your calisthenics or your fitness Instagram account and then you put your follower account and at the time I only had 100 followers I was like they do and that video kind of blew up and that's how loads of other people found me so I've had like multiple videos go viral but that's only because I was either following a trendy trend or because my challenges had finished and it brings people back to my page so yeah definitely recommend you learn from other people so scroll through instagram and see what matches your niche and what other people in your niche are doing okay this one is mainly related to a fitness instagram page account or a calisthenics instagram account and that is to 
post the ups and downs, not just the ups. Don't just post, oh, today I learned how to hold a handstand for 10 seconds. Today I learned how to do this or that. Post the downs as well, because this is relatable for new people that are into calisthenics. And if you want to grow your account to inspire people, then you want to show them that there isn't just up days and good days. There's also bad days as well. And also they want to see your progress. People in the fitness community want to see your progress and how you've managed to learn to do a skill, not just see you doing this skill. Okay, another thing about growing on Instagram is not everyone is gonna like your content. You need to understand that not everyone is into the same thing as you, not everyone is gonna agree with what you're doing, and that's okay. You are gonna get some hate comments. In the two months that I've been posting, I've probably got like 1% hate comments and 99% positivity, love, support, but that's normal because not everyone is going to like what you're doing and you need to be okay with accepting criticism and hate. Um, for example, most of my hate comments are men saying that I'm weak or that I should go back to the kitchen or that I shouldn't. I got this one comment not that long ago and I was shocked. Like there's still people out here that think like this and I'm just going to put the comment here for you guys to see because I was genuinely shocked. But yeah, there are people that are gonna hate your stuff and that's okay. There are people that are gonna call you weak and that's also okay because this is literally a process. This is a journey. It's not, hey, look at me, I can do all this amazing stuff. It's a journey. Hey, look how bad I was here. Look at me learning to do a skill. That's what it's about, sharing your journey. One thing I've learned from growing my Instagram account is that there may be a few people that are close to you that support your stuff, but usually the people that know you in real life and the people that are close to you are going to be the ones that don't support you. Don't expect any support from anyone because honestly, no one is really going to care about what you're posting until the numbers start growing and that's okay. Try and create a community that is interested in the same topic as you're posting. Since I started growing and probably when I reached 10k is when I started having people that know me actually comment and reach out to me and say, oh, I knew I'd make it from the beginning. Oh, I really love your content. I support you. And honestly, those comments are really nice. I really appreciate everyone that's commented nice stuff. Um, but yeah, just know that they may not be there from the beginning. Your biggest supporters are those that don't know you. Although it may seem like my Instagram growth was like an overnight thing, if you guys have been following me on Instagram, you've probably seen that I've grown crazy, crazy rapidly. Even for me, it's crazy. But although it may look like an overnight success, it really wasn't. Before I grew on Instagram, I wanted to start YouTube. I'm not saying that to grow on Instagram, you need to start YouTube, but I'm just explaining to you how I grew. I originally posted my first tune-up video onto YouTube onto my YouTube shorts and it kind of did well because the people that have been following me and that little audience I've grew on YouTube from the beginning, they got the notification that I had started chin up challenge. And then that little support, that little motivational boost I got, I was like, I need to continue this. So then that's when I decided to start my Instagram. And then I had some people from YouTube start and follow my Instagram. So yeah, I started off with YouTube and then I progressed onto Instagram. And now my Instagram is doing a lot, lot better than my YouTube, but that's okay. Another tip is that although you may have really good content, try and experiment on different platforms because, because something can maybe not do as well on Instagram, but then if you post it onto TikTok, it would do amazing. Or if you post it onto YouTube Shorts, it would do even better. It just kind of depends on the algorithm. For example, all of my videos that I've been posting on Instagram, I've also been posting them onto YouTube Shorts and I've also been posting them onto TikTok. And my TikTok is so dead. To be honest, I haven't really been promoting it much, so I don't blame it for not doing as well. But yeah, you can have really good content and it would do well in one platform, but not the others. So just try and experiment with Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube Shorts, because you never know which one of those platforms would be better for you. And for me, it just so happened that my Instagram was the one that blew up and then my TikTok and YouTube didn't do as well, um, but that's okay. Okay, my next tip. I had loads of questions saying what kind of settings I have on my Instagram account and I am on a creator account. I think you can do personal and business account, but I found that the creator one works the best for me, especially if you're trying to become a creator and influencer. So yeah, set your account to creator mode. But yeah, that's all my tips on how to grow your Instagram. I hope they help and I hope that you guys can grow your Instagram as well and achieve your goals. And like always, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you guys want to see more videos from me and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!